Main article. Battle on Death Star I. Am I going to see you again? If I can free the rebels, they're going to need extraction. Probably not. No. Then I'll never need to live this down. Juno Eclipse and Galen Marek rejecting the codename, Starkiller. Darth Vader's former apprentice reclaimed his birth name, Galen Marek, and for the first time, considered himself as a Jedi. Opting to save the Rebel Alliance by tracking down both Vader and the Senators, Galen entered into deep meditation in an attempt to provoke a Force vision. Although successful in his attempt, he was almost overwhelmed by a plethora of possible futures. Focusing on one of the common elements, he discovered the location of the Rebels, the incomplete Death Star. Traveling to the Horu system, they used the Rogue Shadow's cloaking device to approach the massive battle station, entering the thin atmosphere maintained for the workers and slaves building the behemoth. Standing on the open boarding ramp of the Shadow, Galen and Juno exchanged their last words. When inquired as to whether or not he would survive, Galen reluctantly answered that he would most likely die in the attempted rescue. Juno then rushed forward and kissed him on the lips, reasoning that she would never have to live it down. At first, Galen was surprised by Juno's sudden action, but then he returned the embrace. After their first and last kiss, Galen said farewell and leapt into the Death Star's extensive superstructure. Landing on the exterior hull in a clear patch between two construction sites, Galen attempted probing about for the rebels, but found their force signatures obscured by both the widespread suffering and despair within the Death Star, and especially by Palpatine's presence. Darting cover to cover, Galen advanced on two Imperial stormtroopers on a scaffold, overseeing a string of Wookiee slaves. Telekinetically choking one into unconsciousness, he manipulated the other into providing him with information before inducing him to fall asleep. As the slave overseers knew little about the movements of either Palpatine or Darth Vader, or even about the Death Star's layout, Galen opted to ask the construction workers, the slaves themselves. Attacking the Imperials and freeing the slaves, Galen began a revolt. While the Wookiees began fighting, Galen recruited a pair to guide him to the Emperor's location. Led through the confined inner workings of the Death Star, Galen was directed towards one of the superlaser tubes. Following the tube, engaged by the Imperial forces attempting to stop him, Galen reached a convergence chamber. The massive room held the entrance to the Emperor's observation dome, and Galen ascended the catwalks and ledges towards the elaborate portal. Reaching the door platform, he was suddenly confronted by a Shadow Guardsman, reinforced by four Imperial Guardsmen. Galen made short work of the Red Guards, and squared off against the Shadow Guardsmen. Grappling with the Darksider, Galen ended the fight by breaking his opponent's neck. He then telekinetically activated the locking mechanism to gain access through the massive door that led into the Emperor's Observation Dome. As he charged along the corridor towards the Observation Dome, he was spied by the security systems. Darth Vader emerged through the entrance to the dome, lightsaber ignited. Vader acknowledged that he had trained his student well, but declared that Galen still had much to learn, though Galen counted that Vader had nothing left to teach him. Vader, utterly confident that he would best Galen easily, opened the battle with a simple double strike. Galen was caught off guard by the power of the blow, which jarred his wrists and shoulders and nearly disarmed him. Vader used Galen's momentary lack of composure to attack him telekinetically, though Galen managed to sweep aside the missiles. Ducking under two savage slashes, he stabbed at the Dark Lord's abdomen before flicking his blade up, trying to spear Vader through the throat. Vader only barely managed to block, and both combatants momentarily broke off. Galen realized that until this duel, he and Vader had never truly fought as equals. During his training, either Galen would capitulate or Vader would hold back. They fought back and forth, with Galen taking a defensive stance against Vader's overwhelming offense. As he fended off Vader's series of attacks, he danced around the Dark Lord's defenses, testing their limits, all the while taunting Vader. He mocked his former master with the knowledge that, while Galen had broken free from Vader's control, Vader himself lacked the wherewithal to free himself from Sidious. Realizing that there were better ways to kill than to call on his anger, Galen came to pity Vader, seeing the Dark Lord as a result of the same manipulations and abuse as himself, and thus desired to kill him as a way of, freeing, his former master from the pain of being enslaved to the Sith. Galen's taunts, especially his professions of pity, enraged Vader, who ramped up the intensity of his attack. Galen continued to use his self-taught Sorosu to great effect, 
wasting little energy and turning Vedas would be death blows into superficial burns. As Veda continued to relentlessly attack, Galen suddenly counter-attacked with a blast of force lightning, which broke Vader's momentum and forced him onto the defensive for the first time. Galen began to steadily gain ground while Vader fell back. Eventually, Galen saw an opening in Vader's defenses and took advantage of it, slashing Vader across the throat. Surprised but elated, Galen scored two more hits on the Dark Lord in short order before telekinetically pummeling Vader with any and all objects he could find. The last such missile was an energy field generator, which detonated on impact with Vader. The blast severely damaged the Sith Lord's armor and respirator, and destroyed most of his mask and helmet. As Galen approached his former master, intending to finish him, he saw Vader's face uncovered for the first time. Vader, much to the shock and surprise of Galen, was a terribly scarred old man, in whose eyes Galen saw only pain and exhaustion. As he froze, Palpatine approached, praising Galen for his victory. Seeing a perfect opportunity to replace his hobbled apprentice, Palpatine gleefully encouraged Galen to execute Darth Vader and take his rightful place at the Emperor's side. Galen became conflicted. The changes brought on by his recent experiences with the rebels warring against his desire to continue using the Dark Side and become a true Sith Lord. In addition, though Vader's horribly scarred visage elicited pity from Galen, a significant part of him still wanted revenge. Ram Kota, sensing Galen's indecision, intervened and telekinetically snatched Palpatine's lightsaber, using it to kill his guards before rushing the Emperor himself. Palpatine easily fended off Kota with a blast of force lightning, prompting Bail Organa to call on Galen to help the Jedi General. The sudden violence snapped Galen back to reality, and he realized that he didn't want to go back to what he once was, not after seeing what it did to people. He came to understand that executing Vader would accomplish nothing, whereas saving the rebels could change the course of history. With his final decision made, he resisted the urge to kill Vader and instead attacked Palpatine. The Emperor managed to pull out his other lightsaber before Galen attacked, and Marek and Palpatine at last began an intensely ferocious duel. They seemed to be at a standstill, with both Marek and the Dark Lord proving to be just equally relentless and matched in all fields they fought with, such as telekinesis, force lightning and lightsaber combat, neither managing to hit one another. Over the course of their contest, Palpatine would occasionally break off and allow intervening Imperial Senate and Royal Guardsmen to engage Galen though the Force Adept made quick work of them. As they fought, Palpatine revealed that Galen had never been Vader's secret apprentice, and that he was abducted from Kashyyyk on the Emperor's orders. Darth Vader had been little more than a proxy, it was Darth Sidious who had been Galen Marek's true master all along. Enraged by the sudden revelation, Galen drew substantially greater ferocity and strength from the rage he felt and quickly seized the offensive by further pressing his attack against the Emperor. Dodging Palpatine's force lightning strikes, or channeling them into his lightsaber, Galen closed the distance. Throwing Palpatine off of his feet with a telekinetic shockwave, Galen then blasted the Dark Lord of the Sith against the ceiling of the dome with a force push before slamming him against the ground. 